Hey guys, what's up? What I want to do with this video is uh, we're going to explore some different ways that you can get nice clean recordings of drums, guitars, and vocals without having to completely transform your room into a soundproof home studio. For a lot of us, it's not really practical to uh, spend a bunch of money on these acoustic foam panels. For me, even if I bought all of these things, I'm renting, so I'm not going to go glue these everywhere. Um, but the problem remains that when you try to record in a kind of a small cramped room, which is kind of the case for most of us, uh, the microphone's going to pick up a lot of the noise bouncing around the room and it makes it really hard to mix the song when there's a bunch of unwanted noise. So uh, for example, what we'll do for drums is set up a bunch of blankets around the room hanging from the ceiling and whatnot. Um, we'll see if that makes a difference in recording the drums. For the guitars, what we'll do is put the amp facing a corner full of pillows and blankets, see if that makes a difference in the recording. And probably craziest of all, for the vocals, what we'll do is put the microphone in a closet surrounded by hanging clothes and uh, see if that makes a difference. And just to prove to you that it works, I'm going to let you hear a recording of before I do any of these crazy things and then after uh, so you can get a really good idea of uh, whether or not these things are working. Um, so let's get started. For all of these recordings today, I'll just be using my Blue Yeti microphone. And as you listen to this drum recording, notice the lack of bass in the drums and also the natural echo sound going around the room. All right, so let's go over a few simple things that can be done to the room to make the drums a lot more clear, make them sound a lot more full, closer to the mic, not as much echoey, reverby stuff bouncing all over the place. Uh, first thing we can do is shut this door. You'll notice this hallway when I clap. It's really echoey, so if this door is wide open with the loud drums, it kind of bleeds into here. As for the room itself, I'm just going to be pinning up these thin blankets and sheets on the walls and uh, after I do that I'll probably walk around and clap and if I can hear any other spots where the echo is coming from I'll probably cover up those corners or whatever I've got to do. Alright, so five minutes later I've got the blankets up, I've even got some beach towels up, kind of anywhere I could find or anywhere that I could hear some echoes still coming off. And uh, you can even hear it now just as I'm talking, my voice is a lot more dead sounding, it's not echoing nearly as much. Uh, so this is going to be great for recording drums. The very last thing I want to do before recording these drums is I'm going to put some, I'm going to tape some paper towels on the toms and even the snare just to make those a little more dead sounding, a little more warm. Um, so it's just a lot easier to work with while recording. Both drum recordings sounded good, but as far as mixing the song goes, that second recording is going to be a lot easier to work with. Now the guitars, the first recording I did, I just had the amp in the middle of the room, but the guitar sounded kind of thin, kind of tinny, um, so let's look at a few things I did differently for the second recording, and then I'll let you hear a before and after. I've got the amp facing a corner of this room, it's filled with pillows and blankets, and I've got the mic in between the amp and the pillows and blankets. Um, so that's really going to help make the sound a lot more crisp, a lot more dead sounding, um, and avoid you know the sound bouncing around the room. The second thing I'm going to do is actually be outside of this room when I record so that the sound of my pick hitting the strings isn't recorded by the mic.
Lastly, let's do the vocals. As for the song I'm singing, my brother-in-law asked me to help him write it so he could send it to a girl to answer her to a high school dance. I'm singing like Tom from Blink-182 on purpose because I feel like when I sing that way, it's just more entertaining than my normal voice, so please guys don't take me too seriously. The first recording I did was just standing in the middle of the room and they turned out to be really thin, kind of tinny and echoey, and lacking bass. So let's check out what I did to fix those issues for the second recording and then I'll let you hear them both. This is where it gets really creative. You see I've got the mic set in the closet surrounded by these shirts on hangers. Um, it's kind of making a, a nice thick padding, a nice uh, little vocal booth here that's going to give me nice rich uh, dry vocals and I've got this makeshift pop filter made out of pantyhose and a hanger that I'll be using to stop those really loud P sounds and S sounds uh, that come when I sing. Ah, you know, we haven't known each other very long but I hope together at the dance we can be made stronger. Ah, you know, you like this song, I must confess, and I know by the ends of it, you'll know my answer is you. Wait, I guarantee there's a few of you that think the first vocal recording sounded better than the second because the second recording just sounded so dead and claustrophobic. But let me tell you, here's what it comes down to. Which recording is going to be easier for me to work with when trying to mix the vocals with all the other instruments of the song? Well, with the second recording, I can always add as much reverb and other effects as I want with my software later, but it's pretty much impossible to remove the natural reverb and echo that was picked up in the first recording. The second recording is the obvious choice. Nice. Well guys, I hope those tips were helpful. I hope the before and after stuff kind of helped you uh, be able to listen to the difference that it makes to do some of those simple things that I showed you. Uh, just know that none of the things I did are cookie cutter solutions. Of course, there are some situations where you wouldn't want anything to be set up in the room and you might want to capture some of that echoey reverb sound. It all depends on the sound that you're going for. Um, please subscribe below. I'm going to be posting more videos like this. And if you've got any questions or comments, uh, fill up the page with them. Yeah.